Hello everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Hermitcraft. I have something rather special in store for you today. There is a farm concept that I've had in mind for some time, and we're finally going to build it. It's, it's going to be like a unique combination of two different things, and we're going to end up with just something awesome to enjoy. And it will bring us certain materials that we need to finish the TCG arena. However, this thing is mostly done and ready to go. In the previous episode, we assembled all of the redstone. I've actually been over here testing this stuff out, making sure that it works, and putting a few finishing touches on the area. You'll notice extra item frames, some signs, and then the weakness board up the top here. Currently missing the elytra, I need to get three of those. But yes, other than that, and a couple of minor other things, everything's ready to go, but we are missing an important block over here. I'm gonna activate Light Matica. It's gonna show us where we need to place blocks in the world. And as you can see, the blocks that we're missing, where we've got these holes in the wall, are skulk blocks. So today, we're going to build a very unique skulk farm that will enable us to get those blocks. But first of all, I just wanted to show you something with the redstone down here. I decided to put down some scaffolding around the redstone, and whenever I needed to get somewhere to check something, I would just kind of like leave it in place. And it ended up being super useful for like walking around and getting to the different parts of the redstone. And now it just kind of looks chaotic, but you can navigate everywhere. It's kind of cool. And also you might have noticed that we had these yellow and red concrete lanes down the side that didn't seem to do anything. They've been hooked up to the score counters. So this set of redstone lamps and that set of redstone lamps, they indicate the score of the player on either side. And if we look at the button for a victory point, it's got the yellow concrete behind it on both sides. And the red concrete, that's used for resetting at the end of the game so things are good for the next one. So it's a nifty little system where the red concrete, when a game is running, will have the redstone turned off. That means that the hopper here is going to be locked. And then when a victory point is issued, a signal will come through the yellow concrete and create a pulse to power the dropper. So one by one, it can move minecarts over into the hopper. Then just using my cheaty free cam, I'll show you that there is a comparator here and it starts to send the redstone signal upwards, which points into the redstone lamps. So the stronger that signal goes, the higher up it goes. And you know, it powers the first one, then the second, then the third. And when the third one gets powered, there's also some dispensers here to set off some firework rockets. And that will let everyone know who the victor is. And that's like the final element of the redstone stuff installed. So with that explained, all we really need to do is bring these sculpt blocks over here. So let's head over to where we're going to build our farm. And the direction we're traveling in is north. This will lead us past uh, Johnny Ozone. Don't forget about that guy. And then it will lead us past False's glorious base. And of course, my base is over here with the skull as the entrance. The backside is where the ice farm and the games area is. And from here, we just head on basically in a straight line. And I've also noticed there is a really strange lighting glitch in this ocean. And I didn't know I was going to find some farms on the way out here. I don't know whose area this is, but we've found, you know, one of those classic Hermitcraft industrial farming areas. Okay, we have arrived on location, and what we're about to do next could get chaotic, I warn you, because I'm not fully prepared. That over there is an ocean monument. We are going to use guardians of all mobs to convert them into skulk of all things. So in one way, I'm really prepared because I've got all of the materials gathered together for construction. But in another way, not so much, because I don't have a plan of action on how to build it over there without the Guardians kicking my butt, so this could go horribly wrong. Therefore, I think it would be wise to uh, <laughs> set my spawn, make sure I've got a bunch of rockets for flying away easily, and bring a boat so we can get over there. Yeah, that's a good idea. But X, you just said you could use the rockets. The boat is pointless. And construction begins with a single lily pad. And why would I ever bring more than one? There's not like anything can go wrong here with this lily pad placement, right? Ah, we've already got guardians. What I need to do is like suss out where the corner of the ocean monument is and then do some counting. I'm pretty sure they're going to kick my butt to begin with. I mean, can I actually see the corner? Okay, yeah, the corner's here. Then I need to go one, two, three, forward by one directly to that block come up to the surface and just put the lily pad right there. I've moved back a little bit though. 
Nope, I've got it on the exact spot. I'm also not getting attacked, so then we place a block below it and below that. And now we can start the construction of a grid with some scaffolding. I go one, two, three, four, five, and then I'll need to place another one of these below. That's because these are going to support like a big base of scaffolding that we need to build first of all. Ooh, I just got mining fatigue. This is something I had not considered because, you know, I've been in a creative world designing all of this. Okay, found a cow. Could have probably done this if I had a thought of it in advance, but now we're going to have some milk. So, did I misplace a block? Well, if I did or I didn't, I'm going to have a hard time picking up my shulker boxes. And yes, of course I missed one. Aha. And now all the guardians are here and they're shooting at me. Uh it's not going to be easy to construct the rest of this. So creating a nearby base of operations was ugh, always part of the plan. So I guess we'll have to deal with this later. I mean, any block that I misplace becomes a real hassle. I'd like to build this thing without having to take out any elder, any, any elder guardians. And anyway, clearly, you know, I built a beacon here to keep me alive. Uh, maybe I should have put two beacons here. Yeah, I wouldn't mind taking advantage of both resistance to and regeneration. And that is, of course, entirely possible. And this will hopefully keep me alive as I put down the rest of the scaffolding. So this turns out to be pretty tolerable. The Guardians are attacking me, hardly doing any damage now. And then I regen pretty quickly. It might take a beating on my armor over time, though. But here it is. This is the platform that we're going to build a farm on. And now I can explain the concept. First of all, though, I need to bring my things over here. I, I think I'm just going to go AFK for two minutes. That's what we'll do. So two minutes later, look at this. Guardians everywhere. But first of all, it's time to explain the concept of this farm. And uh, it's it's one of my own design. But in researching it, I found a concept from Ian X04 that was just superb that I wanted to take advantage of because it means you don't need to rip out the entire ocean to build a farm over here. So we have rather specifically chosen this top corner of the entire bounding box of the ocean monument. And we will have an AFK spot up in the sky. When we're standing up in that location, there's certain places where the guardians can't spawn. So if I bring this visual sphere into the area and then we pop under the water, you can kind of see how we cut off a lot of the area around here. And that means that they're going to be spawning underneath these scaffolds. So that is how we bypass the manual labor of tearing apart an ocean so that your guardians will spawn inside your farm. We're just going to be up in the sky so they have a restricted space to spawn in. The thing that we got to do next though is design a collection system because when the guardians swim up into the scaffold, we want to then shuffle them into an elevator. And it's that that we want to construct first, which is why we are skipping ahead in time and jumping to the end result, a giant elevator up into the sky. And something you might notice here is this platform up the top. I was smart. I thought ahead. I prepared a nether portal on the other side. And when we're up the top here, we can put down all of these blocks and not have to worry about the old mining fatigue. Now, I've deliberately put this in first because if we look down there, you can see some guardians are getting caught on the scaffold. But we don't actually want them coming into this thing until everything up top is finished. So the collection area will have to wait for now. But the way in which the elevator works is using a classic little technique with slime blocks. This is Guardian Oscillation, and I think we last used it back in Season 2 of Hermitcraft. So therefore, we must travel back in time to the legendary Guardfall. This was the ocean monument farm I built in this season. And it's down here in the collection area that I get to show you this wonderful bit of Minecraft quirkiness in action. First of all, we need some guardians and they're going to get sent into the elevator. When I pop up here, you can begin to see what happens. When a guardian makes it up to a water stream that pushes it onto a slime block, they start to bounce and each and every time they actually bounce higher and higher until they reach the water at the next level which pushes them in to the next slime blocks and they will continue doing this as high up as you want them to go. Now in this farm it was just an optional feature you could activate if you wanted to kill the guardians for XP. But in 1.19 you can of course convert the death of a mob and the XP it would have created into skulk blocks and that's what we're going to do on Hermitcraft.
So there will be a time when we optimize what's going on down the bottom here and that will enable the guardians to come up our oscillating elevator but obviously the next thing to do is to build a skulk converting contraption that's going to be below this last part here where the guardians will get dumped down and we'll use full damage to kill them with a skulk catalyst nearby. And this again feels like a moment where just jumping ahead in time a bit makes sense so I'm going to be building a a big old redstone contraption that's going to make use of some observers, some pistons. Oh, and lots and lots of lava. Well, not a, not a crazy amount of lava, but we're going to create stone. We're going to use that to be converted into skulk. What I will show you first is just this clock setup, because once we build a bunch of stuff on top, it's going to be a bit awkward to look at it. And as I say that, I remind myself that I have this mod for a reason, you know? Anyways, it's simply going to create a pulse that goes out on either side and then from here we're going to have some machines that generate the stone and push it into the middle. Now the timing of this clock might not be like the most optimal thing ever, but it will work and get the job done. And that job is to generate stone and bring it to the middle. No, this is not a stone farm and you might have noticed there was a hopper minecart going around and picking up the items. It'll be able to drop them off into these chests on the side and you probably also notice the skulk catalyst there in the middle so when our guardians fall down from above and die of full damage they will convert this stone into skulk blocks i can then sort of stand in this area and mine some of the blocks that they create because remember they'll also create shriekers and the sensors too yeah shriekers and sensors we'll also get those things from this farm so as for the generation of the stone, the lava sits above the water and then the pistons on a clock push the stone up and then across into the middle. But they've been positioned so that they can't push the piston at the opposite end. So this thing sort of like never breaks when it fills up. And I'm a little bit slow to break the stone here. Obviously the skulk is going to be much faster and easier to break. But yes, it will just continuously replenish just like this. So far, so good, right? If you're thinking what happens to the Guardians if they don't land on those blocks, well, if I've mined them, they'll just fall a little bit further and they'll just die anyway. This also means that we're going to get a bunch of Prismarine items picked up here too, because the Hopper Minecart can pick up items that land on the surface. And so it's also a regular Guardian farm, but none of this is supposed to be super optimal. So it's probably not going to be a great farm for Prismarine or a great farm if you needed a ton of Skulk, but we will certainly get a bunch from it. But we're now done with the top area and it's time to head down the bottom again. So as you know, down at this level we have to build a system that's going to direct all of the Guardians that come up to the scaffolding here into the slime blocks so they can get oscillated up to the top. This is where some important magic takes place because when a guardian comes into the scaffolding they'll actually like jump their way up over and over again so once it's inside of this thing it can go up a level. I'm trying my very best to explain things articulately but those guardians they just keep attacking me. It got me thinking though if I approach the area from over here maybe they'll spawn on this side and there'll be less of them over here so I can place this scaffolding peacefully. Maybe. Probably not. Okay, that actually made a world of difference, and that is the last scaffolding I'm going to place. So from here, you can probably see how we could put water streams coming across right to the middle, but some of the spacing here might look a little bit odd. And that is because of some quirky behavior, if I go ahead and put this water here. So with one on this side and one on that side, notice how the water sort of pulls over to where the scaffolding is, where you would normally have it flow inwards. So it seems like water wants to connect to the scaffolding that's nearby, which makes sense because it can be waterlogged. But because of this, it messes with where the water is going to push the guardians. So the trick to solve this problem to get around it is to use fence gates. These all need to be opened up so that the guardians don't interact with their collision boxes. And then we put our water in the middle. I get hit right as I try to click. And despite having mining fatigue, we can instant mine slime blocks, so we can take all of this away. And now you can see that next to the fence gates, our water flows perfectly. So the next thing that we need to do is put up some walls around this thing so that we can have water going across the edges, pushing them into the middle and from the back into the middle too. And I am well prepared for this as I took a trip to the desert so that we could get lots of sand for glass to build the elevator. 
And we will now use more of that sand to drop in just like below the elevator and have a wall come up from the very bottom to the side of the scaffolding. So maybe this seems like overkill, right? But what we'll then be doing is containing the guardians that spawn underneath our platform in the area below. They won't be able to swim out to the side and this is going to be a great advantage for making this far more efficient. So it won't just hold the water in at the top, but as you can see we've got a tiny bit left of the walls to place and that's because we've got another trick up our sleeve, that is to use soul sand to create bubble elevators. Got to be very careful in here though, there's a bunch of guardians. So I've cleared out the area of our spiky enemies, we're now free to cover everything with soul sand which is going to create bubble columns. Bubble columns which guardians can actually spawn inside of. Now the next thing you might have been expecting me to say is that this place had become really laggy. Uh, actually, it strangely seems to be holding up. But now we have the very awkward task of putting in ugh, the very last few blocks. You can see why this is a problem. But I think we're about to successfully do it. There we go. And like a guardian, we'll be pushed up into the scaffolding. Oh, and a batch of guardians just came to the surface right as I got finished here. So to quickly recap the project, we've created an area in which guardians are more likely to spawn than the water around them due to where we stand up top and it brings them up through the scaffolding, pushes them with water into our oscillating elevator and takes them up to the top where we can start to make skulk. In fact, while I was placing the sand, a bunch of guardians spawned and <laughs> look at that, you can actually see how crazy efficient this thing is going to be. At least at gathering the guardians, bringing them up the elevator might not be the fastest thing. So now, we get to christen the farm by... Dang it, I've got mining fatigue! And while we wait, you can see that the spawning rates are terrific. Guardians are popping up through the scaffolding, getting pushed into the elevator. And this is where they just generally get a bit clogged up and slowed down. One has survived! Wow, how did you do that? Maybe I should make that one block extra higher to be on the safe side. Anyways, what you'll notice about this farm is that it's not an AFK farm. It's for me to come over here and manually mine the blocks myself. We'll also get sensors and shriekers too out of this. It's going to be fantastic. So we break all the blocks. Yep, stone is created. New guardians fall down. We just keep mining. And if they fall down onto the rails, well, we just get some of their drops. I actually really like watching them fall and then seeing the skulk spread around. It's a really cool animation. Oh, this turned out to be a really good project, didn't it? Now, if ever I have a need for an excessive amount of skulk, maybe I could add a modification with like a minecart going back and forth. So I just sit here, AFK going left to right like this. Oh, and I guess one of the things it doesn't farm particularly well is this stuff, right? Yeah, the skulk vein, it'll form on the stone blocks, like just on the top there. But it doesn't form on top of the regular skulk blocks. That's rather interesting. Uh, I also see a block made its way up there, so we could just change those to stair blocks. There's all sorts of modifications that we can make from this point onwards. So last of all, just to make the point really known, while we're standing up here using this, that's when our perimeter is loading a smaller area down here, and you can see just how many guardians it's sucking up into our elevator. And that brings me to the last thing I wanted to mention. Yes, I could have just used a soul sand elevator to bring them up here. And that probably would have made this farm a bit faster, more efficient, but I just wanted to see those guardians oscillate once again, like in Season 2 of Hermitcraft. Okay then, what's our final takeaway for this project? I've been in the area for like 10 minutes, sometimes mining, sometimes not, and we got more than enough skulk for our needs. So that, my friends, as you might suspect, has given us license to come back here and finish up the arena. All of the skulk blocks have been placed. And I also had the pleasure of being able to show this to Vintage Beef. Hello. Beef. Oh, hi. There you are. Gorgeous. I oh. already love the exterior. Oh, wonderful. It's, it's finished, but the area around it isn't. Like, if you have a look at where you're standing, this is going to be like a grand path entrance with, like, flower beds and stuff on the side. Oh, that's awesome. That is awesome. I love it. I love this, um, this path. Such great color combination. You know, these mud blocks, I haven't even had a chance to play with them, and they look great. Oh, they are. They're good fun. You know, I've got a like a potential business proposition for you here. There's okay. there's a VIP box just through here. Oh, no <laughs> way. <laughs> 
So like, oh, what no if you way. what if you sold this to someone and then they came and put some of their belongings in and it can be like their exclusive box for watching matches? That is well. What if you sold it to them? I mean, you built this entire place. Yeah, that's that. You know, I'll get a cut. <laughs> I'll get a cut of the <laughs> okay. sale of the box. You know, that's, that's a good way to pay me for my efforts. <laughs> Absolutely. No, this is great. I mean, I might just buy this box. <laughs> this is great. Looks so cozy. So while Beef was here, I gave him a rundown of the Redstone, how it all works, showing him the game in action, all of the stuff that you've, of course, already seen. Awesome, dude. Thank you so much. This looks incredible. Oh, you, you are most welcome. This was so much fun to work on. The game's going to be a blast. I'll, I'll make sure to take it easy out on you out there on the battlefield. <laughs> all right. <laughs> So from there, we headed over to Beef's shop as he had something to give me to put a finishing touch on the arena. Oh, I see you got another little arena here as well. Nice. I got two back-to-back -back little practice arenas, not nearly as automated <sighs> as yours. That's so cool. I'm like calling it. it Citrus Park because of the lemon and lime. <laughs> <gasps> That's a great name for it. Also... Yeah, I'm going to put a couple of lemons and, or a, le a lemon and a lime on top. This place is adorable. Yeah, check it out. I have cards under glass up here. These are the super rares <laughs> that... Uh, aren't in circulation <laughs> i have my uh camera account over here one day i was streaming and then all of a sudden like we we could hear all this noise and it was you working on this area oh yeah <laughs> i can see all the armor stands like wedged painfully into the same spot together as uh -huh. well yeah that was a process and then i have a little jingle every time you buy a pack of cards yes oh man i want to hear that jingle Ooh. oh oh there's no though. blocks down here wow yeah yeah there's no blocks down there <gasps> Ooh. Oh, I thought I thought you were giving me like a deck because it, it, it looked <laughs> like yet. a card. Not... <laughs> it looked like I a card. I will give you a deck. I'll d it does look like a deck of cards. Actually, I have some uh, oh, man, so dummy cool. decks here. They have like nothing in them, just paper. But oh, there there it is. Yeah, I've got a few things to do. Like I want to put three more cards here, and then I'm gonna stack. So this is gonna be sort of a display case where I'll just put like packs and just random common cards in here, oh, and dang. then uh, yeah, I'll also be selling mini blocks in this shop. But um, oh, sweet. Yeah, more on that later. This is great. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited for people to start playing. Yeah, it's so good to see it all come together. The shop sure was a pleasant surprise, but now we have this, the map that simply goes up there. <laughs> if I could reach, there we go. And with that, you'll probably point out that we still need some elytras, but yeah, the, the arena is basically done. But not the outside area. This is going to be one of my grinds for live streams in the future, just making this place a whole lot more interesting and challenging myself with some landscaping. I also have a bunch of stuff planned for the next few episodes that's going to be exciting too, and we'll probably get underway with playing the TCG game real soon. But that's it from me this episode. If you enjoyed it, be sure to leave a like. Thanks as always, and I'll see you soon with another episode of Hermitcraft. Bye-bye.